Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland. In this edition, we'll be reviewing the new version of the already very good carbon formula wheel from Fnatic, sporting more encoders, switches, LEDs, and a solid full-frame carbon fiber plate. It looks to be a nice evolution to the original unit. Time to put it through the Sim Racing Garage review process and see how it does. So, let's get to it. Now for our closer look segment on the Fnatic F1 V2 wheel. First off, this is almost a, a duplicate as far as the layout goes in the, the, the size of the grips that the grips are made of. In fact, let me grab this guy over here. This is my USB converted F1 wheel. One of my favorite wheels, by the way. I really like the grips on this. It just has always been a, one of my favorites to use. And if I put this right on top here, you can see that, yeah, it's, it's, there's a lot of similarities going on here. The, you know, Alcantara grips are the same. Of course, they say these are made in Italy, but I'm not sure if these were not made in Italy or not. The plastic caps on the ends of the grips are the same. Some of the basic button layout is here also. We've got the triangle buttons of he down here. We have them up here. We have the three across the top on both sides. And we have these two mid buttons. I call them mid mounted buttons because they're kind of midway on the wheel right here and right here too. But yeah, and that's not a bad thing. Like I said, this is it's a good thing because I really like the grip. I've always been a fan of this particular wheel that Fnatic makes. Not so much some of the other ones they make, but this is definitely one of the, one of the better ones, I think. Now this is an aluminum frame here that has a carbon fiber sticker on it. And let's go ahead and put that away for now. This one is made a little differently. Now we've got a solid piece of carbon fiber running out throughout the whole frame. In, in fact, it's even underneath the grips, and we'll see that once we get to the look inside part. But yeah, that's very nice. And it's supposed to be, I think, five mil carbon fiber. So let's, you know, the manufacturer says a lot. Sometimes it comes up like they say five mil, but it's like 4.85 or something. Let's see what we got here. Let's see if you guys can see that. Snug it up there. All right, I got it kind of snug on there now. Oh, well, you guys can see that 495. Oh, there's 50. I got it snugged up there, and that's five, right on five, 5.05, six. You can see if I wiggle it a little bit one way or the other, it kind of gets a little bigger. So, yeah, there it is. I think it's really like four. But close enough to five, 4.9, whatever, but close enough to five is kind of, if you wiggle it back and forth, it will change a little bit. So, yeah, I'll say that that definitely is a five millimeter piece of carbon plate there. So, really nice. It's probably no stiffer than the aluminum one, but yeah. Again, and that's not a bad thing as far as being like the aluminum one because it's, yeah, it just feels great in the hand, I think, anyway, for my hands. And yeah, I've always liked them as far as the shape of these F1 wheels from Fnatic. Right, so we also have these nice, cool, different shaped LEDs up here that do work with Fnatic LEDs. I was running iRacing. And we've got these flag LEDs on the side, right? And yeah, additionally, we have the momentary switches, right? Rocker switches, whatever you want to call them. So we get one thing for each move we make up or down. And yeah, of course the big difference here is gonna be these encoders. And yeah, these encoders feel really good actually. I like the heavy duty det detent in this. It's a very positive feeling and it, it will go all the way around. So you can get up to 12 positions on this one and this one, this one is not usable. It's, it's actually the selector, so you can select for like normal mode, or you can go to select, you want to run handbrake on your paddles if you have that feature, or if you want, if you have the dual clutches from the Podium Series bolt-on dual clutches, you can use that. So that will come into use once we get the Podium add-on for this wheel, and I, I'll actually get that in, I imagine, not too long, not too long before I get one of those, I guess, and we'll check all that out then. So, yeah. I like the feel of these. Very, very nice. Yeah, very. Uh, like I said, a lot of encoders you use are, are so soft you can you can barely feel them. It's kind of weird. And speaking of that, <laughs> we have the thumb encoders over here, right? So the thumb encoders, they are very light to turn. I mean, very, very light. And you see my finger moving there? Get a little closer. That's the detent space. Very, very short. And the reason I'm showing you that is when you're in there driving and you, and you might want to change something, yeah, this 
it's hard to get just one detent. It wants to go to two because it's so easy to turn. Now, this is really not a bad thing or a good thing. It depends on who you're talking to and what they like in a rotary or encoder, right? So we don't, you know, it, everybody's going to be a little different than what they want. So yeah, but it is a little bit too easy for me. I'd like to see it a little harder to turn, especially when you have gloves on. It's like you're just turning a wheel. It, it doesn't have the, any detents in it at all. It's very, it just feels like a wheel then, which is okay if that's what you need. But yeah, I really like this. Now, would, I'd like to have this maybe a little bit less of a detent uh, than is on this encoder here, up here, but definitely be a little firmer to turn. Yeah, and they're both the same, the, as they should be, because they're, they're the both type of encoders in there. But yeah, I would have liked to have seen something a little heavier up here, personally. Right. So, yeah, all the buttons work well, as usual. Yeah, the same old stuff. We got the analog joystick over here. We've got the funky switch. Fanatic calls their funky switch, so that's seven positions we can do here. And really, I don't ever use this thing, this analog one. I don't have to look around my cockpit and stuff. And it's nice to have it on there. But yeah, I'd, I'd like to see a podium. If they came out with a podium F1 wheel, I think I'd like to see two of these on there. Because you can do so much right there. Seven moves, seven moves. 14 different moves you can make or settings you can change or play with. Just all these two. Even though with all these buttons, you know, these momentary switches and all this stuff going on here, including the shifters in the back, Fnatic is actually claiming you can get up to 67 functions out of this wheel. 67 functions, which I'm not sure what they mean by that, but I'm sure there's a way that they're using, like, you know, this is, does this, you know, and you can use this for this in another game, you can use this, so that adds clicks to it, I guess, I don't know. But yeah, that's what they claim, 67 different things, which is a lot <laughs> in anybody's book, right? Now, the thing about the buttons here, obviously it's the same, the same thing we have with other Fanatic wheels, we can actually remove these buttons. And actually, I have a shot of it here with, I, would, I had all of these button covers removed. And yeah, it's just the solid colors underneath. And that's typically how I'm gonna run this wheel because I don't, I, you know, I'll test it on Xbox if I need to. But yeah, other than that, I don't use Xbox or PlayStation consoles for my sim driving. Right, so yeah, not a, to, not a lot to complain about here. I mean, it, it just, it's a very solid wheel. Again, they, they, they went with something that already worked, which is a, a wise decision on their part, I think, for Fnatic. Go with something that works already and, and then add some features to it. And so many manufacturers out there change the whole thing when they change something. And it, you know, you say, oh, I got this. This is great. There's something new they put on here. But now, oh crap, they ruined what I liked. <laughs> so, so yeah, at least for the most part, yeah, I'm very comfortable with this wheel it's like putting you know it's like coming home to the this f1 wheel except this one's heavily modded <laughs> so it feels a lot different especially when we come around the back and yeah the standard shifters no problem using them they work great uh, it, I, you'll see in my driving segments of this video never had a problem with the shift everything worked like it should but and most people will be just tickled with these shifters as happy as can be until they try one of these shifters, a magnetic. And I'm afraid once you go to magnetic shifters, it's really hard, well, not hard, and I guess that's the wrong, and people say that all the time, I oh, could never go back, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you can go back to them, <laughs> but yeah, because you know what the magnetic ones feel like, if you like the magnetic ones, of course, you know, it's, again, it's all subjective, end of the day. But yeah, if you go back to the, the these, it's, it's like, yeah, they work and everything, but no tactile feedback except that from the stop that you're, you know, when it stops moving. Then you know you made your shift, or of course when the car shifts. But yeah, it's just much nicer to use those magnetic ones over there. And I'm actually going to see if those magnetic shifters over there will fit on this wheel, because I know there's some issues with converting this wheel and all the new Fanatic wheels, for that matter, to USB conversions so that we can use them on other DD wheels, right? Something with the firmware or something on them. But yeah, at least maybe some of the hardware will work, and I'm actually going to see if I can mount those magnetic shifters onto this wheel and see what happens. Right, anything else we want to talk about here? The base here is a little different as far as the shape on the back. I was just checking that out. This is a wider base here, and this is coming on all their newer wheels have this wider four-bolt pattern. Before we had a six bolt pattern, which actually only three of the bolts were being used, and the, it, this hub assembly actually bolted in from the inside of the wheel itself in the housing here. But here it's on the exterior. So I'm not sure why they went with that, 
but yeah, that's the way they're doing it now. So yeah, and of course the standard fare with a quick release for the Fanatic Hub that if you can see some of it over here. Yeah, I got one. I got a V2 base sitting over here. So yeah, nothing new there to see and not a whole lot new here. It is a better looking wheel, I think, overall. And it does have more features than the other F1, but I think it retains enough of what the original or V1, I guess we can call that now, Formula One wheel had on it. And yeah, why screw with something that's very successful? And that wheel was successful for them. It still is. I mean, they still sell it. So yeah, and the extra buttons on here, I'm just, the only real thing, I guess, gripe I've got is I'd like to see some, a little bit heavier feel for this rotary. And again, that's personal and obviously totally subjective, but a really nice looking wheel. Nice that they have carbon fiber all the way through. Of course, it has vibration motors in this wheel. And like I said, once we get to the look inside segment, we're going to pull this puppy apart and see how it's made. I've got a feeling it's going to be a, very similar to what this guy is, right? But yeah, I think the f they've done something to the firmware now that I've been reading on the internet in the forums that we're not going to be able to convert this to USB so we can use it on something other than the Fanatic wheel, like a direct drive wheel, like a, you know, an OSW wheel or, you know, the SimuCube wheel or, a, you know, a Bodner motor or something like that or the AccuForce, any of those. So anyway, yeah, closer look. It's not much else to see here. It does a, a good job, I think overall and again i'm glad they didn't mess with the actual design and the grips on this because yeah it's it's very nice to use and you'll see that when i'm driving this i drove it in three different open wheel cars i think or two different ones in a ferrari but yeah not a lot to complain about here i think so we'll go ahead and move on to the next segment okay we have the wheel apart now so we can do the look inside segment and here's the main part of the wheel obviously is the PCB board that runs the whole length here of the top and you know, pretty much fills out this whole frame here. And of course, that's because all of these buttons that we see on the front, all that stuff, is surface mounted. Take a little peek under there. So it's all surface mounted to this PCB board. So if one of these goes bad, the whole board's going to have to be replaced. Right? Unless you're really good at soldering and you can convince a fanatic to send you a button or a switch, or whatever it was, the wind pad. And we have a couple of sockets on here. Obviously, we have the encoders on each side. Their wires are actually going over here to the board on each side here. I wonder if that's labeled. That doesn't say anything. Well, that doesn't really say anything there that I could show you. And, of course, we have two more plugs down here, and they are for the funky switch and the analog switch over in this side. Right. So, the plug cluster we have here. First off, these two, little pointer here, these two plugs right here are actually for the shifters. And if you look closely, you can see it says right and left over there next to those two plugs. Now, beside those, we have these two larger plugs, and they're called AMP right and left. I don't know what that means, so I'm not even going to try to guess. Then we have the center plug right here, and that could be, I would imagine, for the dual clutch because the dual clutch is usually just a resistor in the circuit that's adjustable for that first clutch release where you get your bite and then you release the other one. So all that can be on one circuit. So I'm thinking that's probably it, but it doesn't say, I look down in there, it says left, it just says paddles. It, this, one doesn't have a, a, this one doesn't have anything written on it. And maybe these are the other two paddles for the, and we're talking about the podium stuff right now, the podium shifter assembly. You see three paddles on each side two for shifting obviously and two for your clutches but I'm not sure what the other two are for maybe it's some kind of assignable function I would imagine so that's what these here are for and of course if you're just changing out your shifters these two right here will have those on them and uh, the plate here this cover sits on here like this when the wheel is actually everything is on it so you don't s you can't get access to that but two screws on the other side of the plate here and this pops right off and then you have access to all your plugs. So changing over your shifters to the Podium Series stuff, or maybe some custom shifters, is going to be pretty straightforward, not very really hard to do. And I really like it when a manufacturer does that. It makes it easy to do things like that. Right. Anything else we want to talk about here? Now, oh, yeah, the plug itself here. This is the main plug that goes from the hub over here. See this plug? We'll take a closer look in a second. Getting that off was a bit of a, a pain because they 
and a lot of manufacturers do this it's not just fanatic they put this rtv sealant adhesive stuff on there so that the plug doesn't come apart easy <laughs> so it just kind of it was sitting on here like this kind of like that right and it, it was gluing it down to keep it from coming off so you, ha you have to be very careful with a sharp instrument like a, uh, i used a straight razor and just carefully carb this off to get the plug off and you want to be very careful because obviously we have all these electronics on here you can see those service mount capacitors resistors and so forth yeah you hit one of those you could be in trouble real quick and yeah or you just hit a, hit the board itself and mess up a trace then you got a problem too because this is all very small stuff and very hard to fix unless you had the proper equipment right anything else we want to see here i think that's it oh no wait a minute huh, i almost forgot our motors yeah, here's our rumble motors. Here we go. Get one to move here. And you can see here, this little thing spins around like that. Just like on the V3 pedals, right? Same deal. Might even be the same motors. I don't know. There's no way for me to tell because there's no numbers on them. So anyway, that's our, when we have it in our hands and it's rumbling, then that's what's spinning inside. And they have clearance, obviously, in these grips that we took off. You can see the little indentation there, little pocket, if you will that will allow that to happen and of course you can also see how they've wrapped the alcantara on there and i imagine that had this has to be hand done I, I would think and they've actually got a piece over here on this slot and i imagine that's just to keep things quiet or something like that hmm. anyway very nicely done and nice to know that these come off easily so when we wear them out then we can always buy some more just like you could on the v1 formula wheel Let's look at the hub real quick. And of course, not much to see here. This is a metal piece here. This is all steel. These pieces are steel because that's where obviously all the torque is coming from the motor when it turns the wheel. And yeah, you want it to be steel and heavy like that. Now, this hub will actually come off. I actually pulled the four bolts out that were around it. And these two things here are just some guides and we'll see that. I'm actually going to see if I can move that over there so I don't mess anything up. See if I can pull this off of here without too much drama there it goes okay there we go right so there's the hub and like i said before when i was showing you guys the other hub you can see this is a much bigger hub than the one that came with it actually i haven't showed you that yet but, but you'll see that <laughs> that this is actually uh bigger than the one that on the v1 formula wheel and it's shaped differently too so everything's a little different right Simp you know, the standard fare here, the, the spring-loaded quick release. And you can see the ball bearings in there. I guess I can't get it far enough for you to see everything, but I'm actually going to push those balls back in. And you can see the balls are pushed in now. And when you, when you lower this down, you can see the pockets there. You can see it, it kind of pushes the balls out like that. And that's what locks down your quick release. Very cool. St standard quick release stuff there, actually. And I've got gook on my hands now, of course. So let me get a rag over here and get it off. And we have the plug, obviously, on this side. And there's all the pins. The infamous pins. <laughs> I've never had a really a problem with these pins. I think maybe once in all the years I use Fanatic stuff that one of the pins got a little bent. And yeah, I just bent it back. But I do read a lot of stories. Well, not a lot, but you know, I do read stories of guys that actually have bent their pins and they were having some kind of malfunction with the wheel. And they just went back in, rebent the pin back in a straight position, and you're good to go again. Or if it was really, you know, that bad, then you can always just pull these bolts off here. This whole thing comes out, obviously, and this will follow it. And then you just get a new setup and then put a new one on there and you're good to go. Okay. Anything else we want to see here? I guess that's it. All right. The shifters came off pretty easy. They have this two holes here. These two outside holes are actually the mounting holes. And yeah, that's how you'll be taking the shifters off if you use the Podium Series shifters. You'll just be pulling those off two bolts, unplug it from the board. We saw the plugs already. Yeah, good to go. Easy stuff. Yeah, I guess that's about it for the look inside. Now all we have to do is put everything back together and we're going to again try to put some aftermarket shifters on here from sim racing machines because I have them and I might as well try it, see if they work because I know that there is an issue with the firmware now that the what we've been using for USB conversion is no longer going to work on the Fanatic wheels moving forward on all the wheels. So yeah, uh, 
that I just want to see if at least we can bolt on some extra hardware, maybe some aftermarket hardware, and that would work. I would think the shifters would work because there's really not going a lot going on with a shifter. It's just two wires ground in a positive. And it closes the loop, obviously, in the switch when we, hit, we hit the switch. But we'll see how that works when we get there. I'm happy to show you that there is hope for aftermarket parts on the V2 wheel. These are the sim racing machine shifters, carbon shifters, the magnetic deals. And yeah, they're a joy to use. I have them installed on my version one, I guess we can call it the V1 now, F1 wheel from Fnatic, my carbon one. And I was curious to see if we would be able to mount these to the V2 wheel. And as you can see, yes, we can. And they do work. I've already tested them and actually driven with them in much better shifter, obviously, than the stock shifters that come on here. They're just, yeah, a much more tactile feedback, and yeah, they have a good throw on them that's not too far, it's not too short. So yeah, again, it's nice that we could get these on here, but it wasn't a straightforward mounting job. <laughs> and these are, let me show you these, Sim Racing Machines version 1.4. You can see that right here where they have it. He actually cuts that into the carbon fiber. Right, and these are the big magnets too on here. So it's the same mounting holes as far as the spacing and the height's a little different because this part of the V2 is different than the V1. The V1's shallower and this brings in an issue with the way these shifters are actually made. And if you look, let's see the best way to do this so you guys can actually see what's going on there. Okay, there's a little hinge piece back behind the shifter. It's part of the shifter assembly. And there's two hinges, and then there's this, this carbon piece that runs in between them, kind of securing them together in between there, right? So the problem is this flange the new on this new wheel is much wider than the old flange. And I'll show you, try to give you an example of that. Here's the flange that was, by the way, screwed on from the inside of the hub. You don't have these external bolts like you do on this one. And you can see, uh, hopefully you can see, that the diameter of this flange is, is definitely smaller than the diameter, and it's more round, obviously, than the flange that's on this hub. So, plenty of room on this one. And actually, when you put a USB converter on, it's even more room because the USB conversion takes up even less space. Well, maybe not less, but at least the same, if not a little bit less than that does. So we have the problem of getting a clearance on that hinge. You can see right there, get my white shirt behind it. It's very, very close. See that? So it's very close to the hub. In fact, it was so close to the hub right here you can see a little air, a little gap in there, a light, I think, right there, yeah. So it was so close that I had to use, and you can look down in there, you can see there's actually a couple of spacers in there. So I had to space it out. Fortunately, the original bolt or screw is long enough, the threads are long enough on it to do that and still go far enough into this hub when you secure it that it yeah, I wouldn't think you would ever have a, a problem with it, you know, stripping out, not, not enough threads being in there, that kind of thing. Not a lot of pressure on a shifter anyway. So, we used two washers in there for that, and that's all I did. And I just happened to have some a couple of washers laying around in my extra washer or screw bins. And these came out to be four millimeters. Oh, 397, close enough. So that's four millimeters, a little less than three sixteenths of an inch for uh, people over here in the North America, but everybody else it's about four mil. So if you can space it out that much, then the shifter works. And of course the plugs are exactly the same, so no, no dramas there. Just plug it in and you're good to go. But yeah, big improvement on the shifting, as you might imagine, <laughs> on, on this wheel, which makes this wheel nice, you know, as far as nice to use as my version one wheel is when it comes to the shifter part of it anyway. So yeah, I uh, just want to show you guys that real quick and show you how you can do that if you already have these shifters or if you're going to order them. Of course, I imagine Sim Racing Machines is going to be modifying these shifters anyway to fit this new flange so we don't have to put any spacers into it. But if you have the old ones, they do work and they work really well.
Right. So here we are at Suzuka in the Renault 3.5 open wheel car. And first off, what I like to say here is I like this wheel because of the things they didn't change, I think, more than the things that they did change. And the reason I say that is the grips and the shape of the wheel are identical to the previous Formula Club Sport wheels from Fnatic. I guess we can call those the V1 now. And I had a carbon version. I still have the carbon version, with, which is actually an aluminum frame instead of this new carbon-framed one. And they feel about... I can't really tell the difference as far as stiffness. They just feel identical to me. If I close my eyes and somebody switched the wheels, I probably couldn't tell you which one was which until I could feel for the, the switches and the knobs that are additional to the V2, which actually is a very good thing in my book. And I wanted to try it in a couple of the open-wheel cars first. And I think we went over to the Indy car over at Barber. And yeah, here we are. And same thing here. Everything works good. I did use uh, Fanata LEDs to get all the lights to work, but I couldn't get the the flag lights to work for some reason. I think they're they're fixing that. In fact, by the time you see this video, that might already be fixed with Fanata LEDs. But yeah, I could get the, obviously, the RPMs to work fine and no problems there. All the buttons work great. It's good to have, actually, the extra functionality of these encoders and the thumb dials, which are also encoders. But yeah, that adds a lot of functionality to the wheel in general and the two extra switches we get, those momentary switches. So yeah, not a, really anything to complain about here. It's just getting on with the same thing that we had before with the previous formula wheels, and yeah, which is a good thing. Like I said before, I'm so happy they didn't change it because so many fact, so many manufacturers out there will change things just for the sake of change. And I think though here, Fanatic realized that they had a winner in this F1 wheel because a lot of people were converting them to USB use, including myself, and adding custom shifters to them, magnetic shifters, which as you saw before we were able to do with this. And it makes it a different wheel entirely, obviously, when you do things like that and you're using them on direct drive wheels. So yeah, it's, it's a, a sturdy wheel. The wind is a little bit, the LED wind is obviously smaller than the originals. And that doesn't bother me either way, to be honest. You know, it's just a, an aesthetic kind of thing, really, at that point, to me anyway. Right, and yeah, we're gonna finish out this driving. I believe we went to the Ferrari 488 and we went to the ring one of my favorite tracks as you guys well know and yeah just to drive it in a 10 top car GT car just to get the you know the, the lay of the land I guess using this wheel which is a fine wheel to use obviously for a 10 top too and it is a little narrow at 270 millimeter but yeah my sweet spot I think is 290 300 for a GT car but yeah completely usable as you can see here no issues no problems uh, everything works as it should and yeah just like I said not a lot to complain about here and you know I do like the fact that this now a, a, a whole carbon fiber a solid carbon fiber frame not that it really adds any any more rigid feeling or you know a solid feeling to it than it had originally but yeah it's just aesthetically it looks very cool and being able to replace the grips very easily is also a high point of these Club Sport F1 wheels yeah, all you got to do is three screws, and bam, you can replace the grips if you wear, obviously, if you ever wear out these Alcatara grips, which can be done, obviously, if you're not using gloves and or just using it a lot. So, yeah, that's the driving segment. Not a whole lot to say because it's just a steering wheel. And what we'll do next is, yeah, just go ahead and get over to the final thoughts. Final thoughts on Fnatic's Club Sport Formula V2 wheel. I think I'm more happy about what they didn't change from the original carbon fiber wheel than what has been changed on the V2 wheel. The original carbon F1 wheel, which I will be calling, I think, the V1 formula wheel from now on, <laughs> is a good wheel, I think. I like the way the grips felt and the overall handling when racing. Nice to see Fnatic was smart enough here to carry on with the size and shape of this wheel. So the actual feel of the F1 wheel is the same, which is a good thing, I think. Now, don't get me wrong. The new and additional features that the V2 brings to the table are, for the most part, quite welcome. The 5mm thick full 
carbon fiber frame is a logical next step for the Formula F1 wheel. Even though the difference between the V1 and the V2, as far as stiffness, is really not that noticeable to me when driving. The Alcantara grips are a pleasure to use, and nice to know that they are easily replaceable should they become too worn. I really like the feel of the front encoders on this wheel. They have a good amount of friction, and the detents are crisp and nicely spaced. Now, the thumb encoders have a completely different feel to them. Very low friction and very close detents on these units, which makes it just a bit difficult to move the wheel in single increments. Personally, I would have liked them to have a tad more friction and a bit more space between the detents. The shifters feel just like the previous F1 wheel. Now, no fault can be found as far as the function of the shifters on this wheel, just like on the original one, but they kind of pale in comparison to the feel and action you get from magnetic shifters. The good news is, as seen here in this video, you can still mount some of the aftermarket shifters to this wheel to make a big improvement to them. Or, at the same time, you'll be able to order the very cool looking podium shifters and add some magnetic goodness to your V2 F1 wheel. Overall, I would not hesitate to recommend the V2 formula wheel, unless you already have the original version, <laughs> as that one is still a great wheel to use and, as I understand it, will be fully compatible with Fanatic's Podium DD1 and DD2 wheelbases. I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and if you would like help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.